Howdly doodly do, ladies, gentlemen, and everyone else. Welcome to the Fashionably Late Reviews Podcast, the only podcast that is fashionably late, literally, because we're going to be talking about a game that it literally came out two weeks ago. But why the hell not? We still got some words to talk about it. But to bring those words are the glorious, the amazing kid. Amy Kate Alexander, I called you by well, your middle name first. Just forgot my first name altogether. <laughs> I forgot your name, Amy. <laughs> Stardew Valley herself, the Blue Meanie. Damn, I knew How I should have called myself Stardew Valley. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a badass name. Um, that would be a badass name. Yeah, indeed. I'm good. I'm good. I... Very good. And, but Amy, we're not alone today. I know. For the first time. No, for the second time. Joining for the Fashion Relate Reviews. Is a special guest, all the way from the Trophy Podcast, the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast by the players for the players. I may have fucked up those words, but this man is totally glorious, and that is Joseph Moran. How are you doing, sir? Joseph Moran, the host of the Trophy Room podcast, a PlayStation podcast oh by the players for the players. My yeah, that... goodness gracious! Yes, the I four and a half star podcast on iTunes. Give it a five nah. star review, please, John, because we're gonna get it higher than that. Exactly. We gotta that those are rookie numbers. You gotta boost those numbers up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm looking at you, Australia, in particular. Because we've only <laughs> I you know, you get a mean review every once in a blue moon. But Australia, that was straight up hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> so Australia, take back what you said, or else I'm never gonna visit visit you. And you know what? It, the Outback sucks in Blooming Onion, overrated. And I'll change that once I see more five-star reviews on there. But, yeah, I'm happy to you're be here, man. Thank you so much for having me. You're on yeah, notice, notice, Australia. You're on the notice. Whole <laughs> the whole continent. The whole? Yes, wow. indeed. Wow. That's how the way to start. Piss off a continent, eh, Amy? Let's start this right. <laughs> we've been thinking too small with the people with, oh, with the really that we've been pissing off. Yeah. Exactly. You can start with... Greenland, because they're frauds, and then you just gotta work your way there, you know. Okay, cool. okay, cool. <laughs> take some notes. Yeah, okay. my... take some notes. Write those notes down, <laughs> Amy. How to piss off a continent? <laughs> <laughs> cool. I like this. I like this already. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we are the Fashion Relate Reviews, and we talk about video games. This is where we talk about them. We don't just but well, we might bitch about them, depends on what the game is and everything like that, but we just talk about them. And today's the games are Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, and Chicory, a colourful tale? Colourful tale. Yeah, colourful tale, that's it. I have to remember there. Chicory, a colourful tale. Chicory. And everything like that. I'm la- making that so well, and my partner's literally laughing We've got next audience to me. Participation. Well, We've got audience participation. We've got audience participation in the background, and she's literally wetting herself, it sounds like it. But either way... <laughs> I don't have to sort that, so it's all right. <laughs> We're going to start with the PlayStation game itself. The PlayStation exclusive, that is Ratchet & Clank, developed by Insomniac, Insomniac Games, published by Sony Interactive uh, Entertainment. Uh, the story of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart is a 2021 third-person shooter platform game to... Um, it is 16 year. It's the 16th installment of the Ratchet & Clank six, six, series. 16th? Bloody hell. The game yeah. takes place following technically the event. More. Technically what? more. It's technically more than 16. Bloody hell. The game takes place following the events awesome. of Ratchet and Clank into the Nexus. Well, Amy, I would say go to you first, but this time I'm going to change it up. I'm going to go to the trophy room man himself. Yeah. Joseph Moran. What are your thoughts of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart? I... I remember as a kid going to my friend Connor's house and playing Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal. Shout and out that to game Connor. being shout out to Connor. But well, he ended up being a tool in high school. But nonetheless, I remember fond memories going to his house and just loving that game so much. I remember begging my mom, we gotta go down to the local GameStop. We gotta pick up this game. And th- this game right here, Rift Apart decades later at this point or almost two decades later um it's just i i got halfway through this game 
um, mild, very mild, if you could even declare it spoilers, because you saw it in the trailer. But I was at the pirate level in this game, and I literally had to stop, and I was just like, I genuinely think what I'm playing right here is a perfect game. That's what I have to say about Rift Apart. It's genuinely what Insomniac's going out for, what they're trying to achieve. They nail it and then some. Um, so for me, I I really look at this game going like, if I have faults, I'm really nitpicking here because the sound design's brilliant. The level design is just fantastic. The combat is just such a smart evolution to what Ratchet and Clank is. It's it's Insomniac knowing what they do best and doing it. And not even just learning from what they've learned from Ratchet, but even from what they've learned with games of like Spider-Man. And so, yeah, I am I am absolutely infatuated with this game. It's just it's it's a near perfect game. It really is. It, it got me thinking of like what other games have I thought about in the same way? Um, in terms of like what what is a perfect game when we're when we really sit back and think about it? That's what this game gave me thoughts of from start all the way to finish. I adore this game. Wow. I feel sorry Big for the person shoes. who's gotta follow that. <clears throat> Big shoes to fill. <laughs> Kate to Amy Alexander. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Where do you land on this apparent near perfect game from Joseph Moran's mouth? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> so I don't have a fancy story of it. I've literally played Ratchet and Clank the uh the 2016. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 16. So that was my first Ratchet and Clank, and this is my second Ratchet and Clank. Like, this is what happens when you skip two PlayStation generations. Like, I went from PS1 to PS4. Um, <laughs> with other consoles in between, but, you know. Yeah. Um, like, so, like, I obviously, like, I played it, finished it. I did it in, like, two days. Um, and I don't do that with games unless I like them. <laughs> like, mm. unless I really like them. Um, and I had a lot of fun with Ratchet and Clank. It's a very fun game. Like, that's the sort of... I know that's like, you know, critics are supposed to avoid the word fun, like, because it's really generic, but that's like the overriding emotion I had um, while playing it. Like, I just had a goofy grin on my face, like, the entire time I was yeah. playing it. Like, I don't think fun is a bad word or something to be avoided because that's what this game is supposed to be. Like, even, like, the story is just like, what a... You know, what would a a, a family game story be? It's yeah. simple. Fair. But it's like the dialogue that it, that really takes it home, whether it's from outside characters to main characters. They're just funny. All of them are funny. And they have the SpongeBob appeal where it's like, yeah, there's jokes here for kids, but there are also jokes for adults. Like, there's something along the lines of, like... Um, you're fighting the first boss and he says something to the to the terms of this is what I get when I don't when I don't let people have maternity leave or something like that along those lines and I like I laughed my butt off because I thought that was just hilarious <laughs> and like no kid's gonna get that but my um, dumb dumb ass will you know well, he did. Go, going <laughs> off what you just said it seems like it's followed the same thing from the last game for what I heard when I when I played I played the last game I uh, absolutely loved and adored it. I thought it was a really fun game, especially just like Amy, that was my first time playing Ration and Clank. Uh, but when I heard about that game and the reviews everyone was saying was it's very Pixar-ish in the, the types of how they balance the family the family fun. That kids are going to get jokes and they may not get the adult jokes, but they're still going to enjoy the game. And the same goes for the family, the elder, the older people, the elder people, the adults, the families, the parents, or something like that. So it seems like they've again struck that right balance. Am I right there, or am I a little wrong? I'd say you're say? right. I'd say you're right. There. Yeah, sure. One hundred percent. Very good. Very good. Now let's get into the the meat of this game. The, the meat. Gritty. The, the nitty gritty. The parts where filled up. I don't know how many pages of Amy's book. But there are there are pages apparently, ladies Two. and gentlemen, and, it, and Joseph is winging it, <laughs> but he wings it so good, so it's all good. He's a much more eloquent speaker than I am. So, yeah. <laughs> I oh, you really? right. thank you. 
Yeah, like you do all right. No, I do all right when I've got a script and he- I heavily edit in. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna go to you first for this, Amy. Uh, what are the good parts for you? I mean, all of it. But like, I I could go I could go in detail with some of them. So like, two like well one thing first. Like you you mentioned some games before that Insomnia. What's my webcam doing? Come on, come on. Go on a little be cool. Focus. Be cool. Um, yeah, you mentioned some of the Insomniac's previous games, and I just you didn't you didn't mention the most important one, which was Sunset Overdrive. This game has some sun, has a lot of Sunset Overdrive vibes for me, and that might just be because I guess Sunset Overdrive was my first Insomniac game. Um, wow! But in terms of like the 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 combat, it's very reminiscent of that. The other game that this combat was very I was thinking of like a good comparison for it, or like I was reminded of as I was playing it. And this is going to sound a bit weird, so you have to bear with me here. Was Doom? Okay, twenty sixteen okay. slash I guess Doom Eternal as well. Like because like so you like the combat was was a lot of fun. I enjoyed every encounter. Like I I was going out of my way to do side quests, and I was looking around the maps to find stuff just just so I could get into more fights. Like I did the there's a fighting pit arena thing. Um, at one point in the game, I did all the challenges in it because I was like, I get to have more fights. This is awesome. I yeah. love them. And it was very reminiscent of Doom in that you have to constantly be on the move at all times. Like, you can't stand still and shoot. You'll get slaughtered, more or less. It's not mm-hmm. as difficult as Doom, I guess, but it's that constant weapon switching as well. For some reason, like, you have to switch weapons constantly. And for some reason, that always gets me. Like, just constantly switching, like, okay, this weapon, and then you get a few, and then, like, oh, something happens over here, and it's like, I'll get the grenade, and I'll throw the, the grenades. I don't remember most of the yeah. weapon names, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, the weapons were fantastic, and I loved switching between them. So, like, you fill up your, your, your weapon wheel. Like, there's, like, what, two and a half, like, pages of, like, weapons in that weapon wheel? Three pages? <laughs> yeah. They give you a lot. They give you a lot they of weapons. They never feel lost for yeah, the most part. Right? Yeah. Like, there wasn't really a weapon in my art. Like, there was a couple of weapons I didn't really use that much. Like, I didn't really use the the, the headhunter all that much, for example. But... Oh, my God. I love that gun. <laughs> because it reminds me of Thor Ragnarok with the Grandmaster. I, I even put it on Twitter because I, I just... <laughs> it. The way you shoot, like if you get a headshot, a critical hit, and you kill you, you you kill the guy, they'll literally you see them disintegrate. And it reminded me of the part in Thor Ragnarok where the Grandmaster goes to his own like cousin. He's like, uh, uh, "Please pardon me." He's like, "Okay, yeah, 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 I'll pardon you." He grabs a stick. He's like, "I pardon you from life." <laughs> <laughs> and he just like taps him. He just like disintegrates. The same vibes. See, but I love the headhunter. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Like, I like the uh, the topiary sprinkler. You know that little grenade that mm-hmm. turns everything into like plants. I was like that 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 opened every fight for me without a doubt. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But like juggling all these different weapons, and then it's like I was using them all. It was great. Like in games like this, I have a tendency to stick to like a few weapons. Like uh, I re- when I replayed Mass Effect um, recently, like the first one, I literally used one weapon for the entire thing. Like, yeah. I just didn't bother with any of the other ones. But like with it, like with this, it's just it was constantly juggling between them, and it was just every combat encounter was just felt brilliant. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't think that's crazy to say. It reminds you a little bit of Doom, because Doom is um, if Doom's chess, this is checkers where. You do have to think about the weapons you're, you're choosing. You're constantly going through the weapon wheel going, okay, so I'm fighting this mob of enemies, so I'm going to throw like a topiary sprinkler down and I'm going to throw, you know, or like the Fist of Doom's going to work better with these bosses here. So like you are switching through weapons repeatedly, and it's something that Ratchet and Clank has, has done for a very long time, um, and they continue here is, they don't give you all the ammo in the world for things. So you are constantly thinking about what weapon I should go to next when I'm out of like headhunter ammo, for example. Yeah. 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 There is that aspect of it where it's just like, I, I was finding myself around low on ammo a few times um, for specific weapons. 
But yeah, it's just like, it does go that layer deeper of being like, oh, I'm in this situation. Like, say for example, like the, the flying wasps, I found that they like grouped up quite well. So it will be like, I'll get the lightning gun out because that's going to zap all of them. Um, or like, oh, I'm in a boss fight. Here come, here come all the extra enemies. I'll just throw the topiary sprinkler because that'll, that'll stop them while I fight this massive boss. Like stuff like that. It's yeah. just constantly thinking it through. Like con- It's constantly being on your mind, but you're never overwhelmed. So like at no point am mm-hmm. I like, oh, I've got too many options. Like, you know me in options mood. Yeah, I get overwhelmed really easily. <laughs> yes, you do. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Moods? Um, I am just the host today for this, mate, because I have not got a PlayStation 5, sadly. Oh, no. Oh, that hurts him. my soul. It hurts, my, your, hurts your soul. It hurts my soul, because I've been gagging for this. Yeah, <laughs> I've been literally hunting. Hunting. And the well, scalpers hunt even better. <laughs> what we're doing on the trophy room, um, and to some success, is when I, try, when I find a PS5, I hold it for people and I don't charge extra. I'm not a scalper. So what I do is like, I just hold it for people. All you got to do is of course pay the PS five and the shipping. That's it. Well, you know, if you see one in the UK, hit me up. Right, well, <laughs> Even though you're in America. Well, to be fair, they always come up at like three o'clock in the morning. So it's like, yeah, just the, just per- is the perfect person. Keep an eye on Argos. Argos. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye on Argos for me. Um, I got you. I got you. Imi stealthed in a little bit there, but what about you, Joseph? What uh, parts worked for you and everything like that? We've gone into the weapons a little bit. Is there anything else worked for you? Man, I'll, I'll continue on the weapon portion because honestly, what? the weapons in this game are so good. I like, uh, I, lo- I love Ratchet and Clank a lot because of the weapons and leveling them up. They do not just more damage, but they do more stuff. So, like the basic burst pistol that you get. Um, the longer you hold it down when the 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 like the higher the level, the more bullets it shoots out. Um, the enforcer does a higher cone damage, Mr. Fungi, your 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 more adorable little uh, <laughs> fungus partner. <laughs> yeah, and he just talks so much shit about everybody. It's great. Um, like he'll aggro opponents away from you, so it'll help you out a little bit, and there'll be like an additional one. Same with the fist of doom. Um, so like they do they do special things as time goes on. Um, And to me, one of my favorite, (laughs) one of my favorite uh, weapons in the entire game has to be, and I'm just trying to find it here. There you go. The black hole storm. The black hole storm is a gun you get later on in the game. And it's literally just a a chain gun. Like it's, it's just like, (laughs) it should be a sentry weapon. But the cool thing is when you're leveling this thing up, what ends up happening is you create little black hole like voids that explode. So not only are you just laying waste and you're just holding down the the, the trigger and just letting it rip, you're also just exploding these guys on contact as well, which makes it so much fun. And I'd be remiss because I don't know how much y'all love the DualSense controller. Oh, I love it so but- much. Oh, my God. It's so good. Dude, oh my god, yes. firing weapons. Yeah. Oh, 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 dude, it's so good. It's so good. And you <laughs> lit. He's like, become a dude, bro. I'm become a surfer. Like, like, oh, dude. Dude. <laughs> oh, dude. It's just, it's just, it's so good. Um, feel like feeling the vibration. Some weapons, it's simple. You just you feel like a little vibration here or there. But with other guns, and I'm going to get the name of this one because I'd be remiss. Uh, da, 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 da. It is the... I got it. I got it. Enforcer. There you go. The Enforcer feels so great when you shoot because you feel the kickback of like this thing is a shotgun. The one thing that they do really well is as well as the adaptive triggers. Um, You hold it slightly Half down. Time. There's a... Sh- yeah, you, you're like halfway down. And you get a, a a basic ability, or you hold it all the way down, and you'll get the the fullest extent of this ability. The one thing that I learned halfway through, and I think it's with, uh, and I can't believe I know the name of this, but the Nagatron, the oh, Negatron the Collider, big Ghostbusters, guy. Wow. big, yeah. yes, this thing. When you hold it down halfway, halfway, you're charging it up. 
uh, and it shoots this just giant Kamehameha wave at these guys. And it's just, you you actually see the ground rip up, like the earth just shatter uh, beneath you when you're charging this thing up. And then when you let it rip, it's just, it feels like a giant beam just shooting out of your controller. It just feels, it feels so good. It's something like, it, it is something you have to feel to believe, and I know every PlayStation podcast we harken on how much we love the DualSense controller, but it's it's so true. There's also one that is like a shield weapon, where you pull it halfway down, and you get this big shield. And it, you know, of course, takes any incoming bullets or whatever projectiles come at you, it absorbs, and then when you pull it all the way down, it shoots out the shield and all the 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 projectiles that you've held at whoever or whatever's in front of you. And so it just does weapons not only look great on screen with all the particle effects that these things do. Um, again, my personal favorite is the headhunter because you just see people literally disintegrate. Um, but it's also how weapons feel, which is such a big deal. And when games like this do it, well, you really understand why the dual sense is such a big deal. Um, it's it's for these type of type of things. I I absolutely love the weapons in this game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like they're just so much more creative than like third person action game where it's like here's an assault rifle, here's a shotgun, here's a sniper rifle. In this game, here's like yeah, it's like here's yeah. a Here's a thing that's a Gatling gun, but also it makes like black holes and, and things explode. And it's just like it's so much fun. But I love your point about the dual sense. Like every PS5 game we've talked about on this show, like I've always done. So I've always done what you just done. So it's nice that someone else has done it. Where it's just like I have to bring up how good this controller is. It's incredible. Yeah. I said to Moody yeah. um, when I was playing Returnal, it's like, can you give a controller game of the year? Yeah, <laughs> he did. <laughs> he yes. actually did. You're I so think that's right. what it's going to be at the end of 2021 <laughs> yeah, for us. Right. Sammy's going to be fighting with herself. <laughs> just like, this Honestly, is it. Actually, <laughs> Amy, you're, you're 100% right, because I was playing Halo 4 the other the, the other night, just last night. Um, I was playing it with the boys, and th- I got the rocket launcher, and it does the cool little reload where it like, cycles to yeah. every time you... Yeah. And I felt like the rumble, but I was like, man... If only this thing felt like, like if only this thing was on a dual sense, because you would actually feel you the would, like, cylinder. Feel it just go and click Should into you... place on the on, on yeah. your left hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely. Oh, Chef's shit. kiss. Instead of ducking, enough of drooling over controller. We're talking about a video game here. Um, one of the biggest things that came out of this game, from what I've seen, is obviously mm-hmm. the brand new character that is Rivet. Voiced by the great Femme Shep herself, Jennifer Hal. Hal? Hale? Hale. I think. Hale. 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 Um, to what I hear, I hear nothing but that you did an amazing job and everything for that. But what are your thoughts on the brand new character, Rivet? And is she the new Jacob from Twilight, where everyone has her fur- has their fairy fetish on? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Rule 34. <laughs> yeah, Rule 34 has really just destroyed this culture. Um, I think Twilight I was... destroyed this culture, but either way. <laughs> True. <laughs> I, honestly, I feel like, yeah, I feel like society peaked and then Twilight movies came out, drastic downturn. But um, I saw some people go, they weren't a fan of Rivet. Here are the outside and them. yeah, <laughs> I love Rivet. She I is so... Fanboys. Yes. So no, maybe that's funny, though. Yeah, <laughs> so I, she is such an endearing character. And she's so not like Ratchet in so many ways. Um, but at the same exact time, like, what boils down, what makes a hero out of Ratchet, what makes a hero out of Rivet. Uh, so they both do what has to be done, right? Like, staring at the face of, like, adversity, saying, let's go, bro. But she's more... She's more... I would say headstrong than Ratchet is. Um, they do a great job with each individual character, but R- Rivet is just so lovable. She is just so adorable. And like watching towards the end of this, this there's a scene with her where they hit an emotional chord, and I'm just like, 
there there is a little girl right here that's playing this game for the first time. Like, and this is this game is Rivet and and Kit more than Rivet and, or Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, and that's I wrote that in what my makes notes. Me, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of people thought, or some people thought, she didn't have enough screen time, and I'm like, no, she actually. I think she has more screen time than than Ratchet does, and I think they they add her in such a smart way that really adds to the universe. It's not like the like an Abby situation in The Last of Us, where they add her and they're like, this lady's arms are too big. Um, this is something where it's there, there is no complaint. She's she's genuinely incredibly acted, incredibly voiced. I love her. I really oh, do. Yeah. Same. Um, I feel like she probably had the same amount of screen time as Ratchet. Like, or like R- Rivet and Clank. Uh, let me try that again. Rivet and Kit probably had about the same amount of screen time as Ratchet and Clank. But like, mm-hmm. I feel like their story was more important to yeah. the game. So I feel like you. F- I feel like you could feel like there was more. They had more time in the game. Um, just purely because, like, Ratchet and Clank were kind of side characters in this game, which is fine, like, mm-hmm. because the stories of Rivet and Kit were really, really well done. Like, I mean, the the plots and the stories were pretty, were more or less pretty pretty generic, but the char- it was the character moments of Rivet and of Kit, um, especially when they come together, because you meet them, sep- like, Ratchet and Clank get separated, and they meet one and yeah. then the other, so it's like they're separate for quite a while. Um but like, like especially when they come together towards the end, like I, I loved it, and I remember the exact scene you were just talking about that that emotional beat, which was like the emotional climax of the game, was just awesome, and I loved it. Like, and you're right, yeah. there's 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 some little girl out there who's playing this game who's just like just absolutely in love with it, right? Like, and I, like I was I was absolutely in love with it as well. Um, yeah, I love them both, and anyone who says mm-hmm. they're they're not great, I'll fight you. <laughs> I will. I will fight them as well. I'll fight. I fight Dirty. Join that one. <laughs> what, what among us guys? She what, she does fight Dirty. I fight Dirty. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I love. I can just see it now. Like Amy, you're putting your hair in a ponytail. I'm going. Like, I'm sorry. What did you say? Let me just. Let me just <laughs> take this. <laughs> let me just take this. Let's give me this, one more, man. Let me just take this cute headband off. Let me just put this ponytail on. <laughs> okay. What were you saying? Yeah. yeah exactly. Um. And the 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 really you're right. I think Ratchet and Clank they both awesome. Like they also play a secondary role because it's been 16 plus games that you know these characters already. They have an arc that is them being separated, and Ratchet has um I think a a very strong arc as well. Um without spoiling anything. I think his story is, is great. And it's really, they fool the audience by saying Ratchet and Clank and slapping it on the cover because this is a Rivet and Kit uh, origin story, what they're telling you. And Rivet is like the companion to, to Ratchet. It's been two weeks, y'all. She's been in the commercials. Yeah. So like, it's, it's, she, her character or their character, because they're, they're a robot. Um, is so good, and I feel like anybody who's ever self doubted of who they are, of where they've come from, or anything like that, is gonna find a home with Kit. No matter what age, I think we could see Kit and say we've all been there at our at some point. We've all felt some type of guilt, whether it was something that we've done in our past. Uh, or or whatnot, and and whether you make that define you or not is something that defines you. And I think they did a great job with uh, with Kit. She's she's excellent. Absolutely, really yeah. I like I like the fact that um, like because like Ratchet, it's like Ratchet. Ratchet is the character that meets Kit, and then Rivet is the it, like Clank is your introduction or to Rivet. And I like the way that they yeah. they separate that out. Um. It's really, really well done. And shout out to like the 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 smaller characters as well. Glitch is so adorable. <laughs> like, oh my I god, I love Glitch, Glitch so, so much. Um, yeah, and um, uh, Junkbot as well. 
<laughs> yeah, junk pot's great. Also, damn it, all the pirates in this game. Every single pirate, yes. <laughs> Every single one. The French dude kills me all the time. Oh, uh, he spr- sprained my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> he has this thing with Rivet, and it is it is almost like Pepe Le Pew <laughs> type of, like, like, thirst for Rivet, but, like, in a conceited, like, douchey manner. It's like, Rivet, I know that you are in love with me, but we cannot. And she's like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to kick your ass, dude. <laughs> like, it's great. I love that, man. Love it. Yeah. Well, man. I'm absolutely loving this banter so far. It's really good to hear this game is so well loved and both by both of you and everything like that. Uh, before we delve into possibly some negatives, who knows? Um, have you got anything else that stands out for you in this game and everything like that? How's the story? The story you've touched on a little bit, but I don't think you've delved fully into it. Like, obviously, there's some heartwarming ones for certain part of the characters, but how's the overall story for you? It's good. Yeah, it's good. It's solid. This is a story that's driven by its characters and not by the plot yeah. so much. Or how it's that's meant to sure. be in real life, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to story in any, any form of media. Yeah. Hey, you can have strong plots, like if you want, but like, yeah, for for Ratchet and Clank, uh, the Rift Apart, though, it's it's fine. The bad guys doing bad guy things, you have to go and stop them. To... Exactly. If maybe that is the weakest part of 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 this game, but it's often taking a, a seat back to really uncovering these characters, the world. If you're an old Ratchet fan, there's a lot of characters that you're like, oh my god, them, and they're doing this in this universe. Um, there's a lot of that in this game, and I, I, it, I love it for it. So, yeah. Well, it's fantastic to hear. So, sadly, now we have to get onto the little bit of the negatives. I know Joseph, you said overall this is a near perfect game for you, but you have said you do see you have some nitpicky things or anything like that. So, yeah. anything nitpicky comes standing out for you? So, I I love the new game plus in this game. I think it's great, but I would just like to re explore the planets um like when i when i get there on a planet i would like the option of like putting bad guys in that world just for the sake of of going through them uh i did have some crashes i had a crash uh on the game so that is to note and sometimes like i'm looking at one of the playthroughs here um i fall i i fell through some parts of the world uh, that were kind of clumsy. So s- there are some glitches, I- I- even some platforming elements that I'm not, I-, I don't completely jive with. But like through my 20 plus hour experience with this game, that's all I'm thinking about. And so that's all I can think of. M- and maybe, maybe if I could give some credence to um, glitches, parts could be a little disorienting to f- people. Yeah. But you can skip them completely and not lose out on any trophies or story. So they do give you that option. That's it. That's all I got. I know. I'm, I'm a Sony pony and I hate myself for hey, it. Hey, there's nothing wrong with not being able to find a flaw and not like many flaws in games, man. Yeah. I do it all yeah. the time. <laughs> hey, <laughs> ask me about Bloodborne. <laughs> Don't ask me about Bloodborne. We'll be here for a long time. Yeah. Go, check out, uh, go check out uh, her retrospective on it, which is an hour and a half long. Ladies and gentlemen, and uh, so it's... Amy, what part? What? But is there anything of this game that didn't work for you personally? Um, like Joe said, I just I had a couple of crashes. Um, it the the you ought to say I've seen pretty robust, so I never really, I never really lost much progress. Um, mm-hmm. which is good. Um, I don't know if we're just telling me like, he's talking. To you. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we lost. Oh yeah, he glitched out a lot. I think he's. Huh? I, think he's fr- I think he's glitched. <laughs> yeah. oh, there he is. There, there he is. <laughs> yeah, some here. Some. No, nah, that was an awesome. Someone decided to hit the wire off the internet. Uh, 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 that was an awesome pause to to freeze in though. Like that was awesome. Um, well, okay, go on. Continue. <laughs> so yeah, like I, I crashed a couple of times in the game, but um, other than that, like my one big thing was so. And, well, I say big. It's actually not big at all, and I'm, I'm kind of nitpicking. But like the the fights in the game could get very visually disorienting, um, 
because you know what you, you pick up i don't know what the currency is called the c- coins whatever like then they're Both, all float. Yeah, yeah. yeah the bolts okay then they're all floating towards you and it's like if you're in the middle of a fight and there's loads of bolts and they're all flying towards me and then all the enemies like weapons and particle effects are going off and then i'm making all these massive particle effects and the the, the scenery is exploding and these boxes have just blown up and sometimes i would just be playing it like it would be very overloading, like, like mm. in terms of like visuals. So sometimes I could get a bit disoriented by that, um, because I've got like a thousand bolts like floating around me at the same time, and it's just like I don't know. What, my eyes don't know what to focus on here. I can't figure it out. Ah, where's the enemy's gone? Like my camera. Yeah, that was well timed. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. Sometimes it's a little disorienting. The bolts as well. I had the opposite effect of like, where are you guys? They're so small. Oh, they are so tiny. You. Yeah, they, like if you're just looking for them in the in the in the environment, it's like they're so small. It's just like I kept running around yeah. arenas and then like, oh, there's this massive pile of bolts I've missed. Like that was weird. I'm sure I'd already run yeah. across here, but apparently not. <laughs> exactly, I get that all the time. Now you can change them. So, like, you could change the size as well. But, like, just the default size, I, I thought they were... They needed to be a little shinier and or they need to be a little larger, for sure. Well, that's fantastic to hear. <clears throat> Let's wrap this talk of Ratchet and Clank while I suck on my milkshake that's finally arrived. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. What, 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 what's, uh, what's, what type of milkshake? Uh, mint chocolate. Man, I've you know I'm I appreciate mint chocolate chip ice cream now. Used to oh, not. It's, delicious. it's oh, so it's refreshing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's refreshing as hell. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Final <laughs> thoughts on wrestling clank. Um, Go. Can we talk about the rifts? <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> like, I guess they're they're in the. T- I don't know why I'm closing this. I've got a whole other game to talk about. Um, the the rifts. Holy moly! Like they weren't kidding about load times and. And like just being able to like switch immediately between like so because the, the the central concept of the game is in the tile rift apart and it's like you, you at times flicking between different realities and mm-hmm. it's it's completely seamless like <laughs> you can like like when you go through the, the big purple ones to like get the 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 collectibles and you literally you just pull it up and then you walk through and you're in an entirely different level there's no loads, there's no, there's not even like a hidden loading screen or like a cutscene of hiding the load. It's just, you just walk in and then you do the thing and then you come back out again and you're exactly where you left off. And it's just like, the other one is um, in the combat arenas where you'll sometimes, they'll be like, they'll be like the rifts in the combat arenas and you can grapple to them. And I don't know about you, Joe, but the first time I did that, my mind exploded where it's just like, I've, I've used a million grappling hooks in a thousand games. <laughs> and my brain is always, you hit the thing, and then you pull yourself towards it. You just go, wee. Yep. No, it's not and how it's it works. Like... This one, <laughs> you hit the thing, and then it just, woof. And it's just like, you don't move, but you're just there. And it was just like, magic. <laughs> this is magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, can I cast on the show? I forgot. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. Okay, good. So I remember talking to Brock McLaughlin and he was just like, yeah, when I was playing it, when you first, when you first go through a riff, you're like, Oh, what the fuck? And I, I remember doing the first riff going, Oh fuck. Brock is right. Yeah. You just <laughs> like, go, fuck. What the fuck? Yeah. Going through the, the dimensional rift. I was like, Holy shit. This is. And, and it, when a game gets you to think how they just did that thing, you're just like, so is it? Is there a trick that I'm not seeing here? A door that doesn't exist but exists here? Like, how are they pulling this off? Like, there's no, like, this... cut. There's no way, like, it could be, like, a load or anything. It's just, like, what, mm-hmm. one second you're on this platform, and then the next second you just, you're standing over there. I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Danny, Brady, you need Danny O'Dwyer to do, a, to do a, a, a no-clip documentary about how they made this game and ask Please. them about the rifts. <laughs> Yeah, look at what I've seen from the game and everything like that. I'm going for my minimalistic knowledge of engine work, which is if either Unreal 4 or Unity, the coding for that would have been absolutely bloody bonkers. That's what I'm like, that's what I'm thinking in my head. It's like, yeah, there are some loading screens. You do get on an elevator or two here or there. 
but it's so few and far between that it really does blow my mind uh, when when you're doing some of the things you're doing. I'm just like, all right, game. Okay. You're, just, you're just showing off now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is the thing, though. This is the beginning of the PlayStation 5's life cycle. What are the... Well, like, this and this is just coming to like, What's the next Spider Man gonna look like? We've already seen a little hint of it, but what is the next Spider Man gonna look like? Yeah, we've what's had... the next Naughty Dog gonna look like? What is God of War gonna look like? And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It's like, what the <laughs> hell? And here's the thing what we praise 2016 for looking like a Pixar movie. This legitimately exceeds it at some times. And I oh, and I think, yeah. like, in four years, seven years, whatever range this console's lifespan is we're gonna look back on this game going <laughs> really this was the visual showcase Wait, um you that's, thought this that's was impressive <laughs> exactly <laughs> my playstation 5 floats now <laughs> yeah. well yeah. there's been there's been four four ps5 like four ps5 games at least what that i've played um which is obviously miles morales demon souls returnal and this and like Regardless, regardless of what I thought of the games or not, like the 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 way it uses the PS5 and the controller has been incredibly impressive. Like all of those games, yeah. in one way or another, um, like I've constantly been impressed by the yeah. hardware. You know what? What PlayStation lacks in services right now, they they have made up for it in in the gaming department because. There's just so much that shows what this console is capable of. Even if it is a game that's also running on PS4, like uh, Resident Evil or Miles, they always they always make the strongest case of like, yeah, this looks good, but it could look even better on this thing and feel even better on this thing. And so, you're not going to get any yeah. loading screens. It's literally... You could play the whole game from start to finish by accident because there's no point where you can go, yeah. oh, yeah, I should stop now. <laughs> I'm going to go eat something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I just like f not get, being able to take a drink, not being able to mess reply to messages. It's, it's a whole thing. Like You just can't yeah. because you just keep – game just keeps going and going and going and going and going. <laughs> this game's ruined my Twitter game. <laughs> yeah. I'm supposed to be live tweeting. <laughs> Come on, Exactly. Man. <laughs> Come on. I'm going to be tweeting it. To, oh, I'm on a break now because there's a load screen. I need to now I can tweet out. Really loving what I've played so far. <laughs> Just on a load exactly. screen while I'm waiting. <laughs> exactly. Now, no. It, it's uh, no chance. something else. Something else for sure. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Anything else you want to talk about for this game? No, it's perfect. Yeah, Go it's out there and buy good. it. Yeah. Get it. Well, that is fantastic, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We got Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. That is one of the highest reviewed scored games that has come out in 2021. But it's not the highest mm -hmm. rated game that's come out in 2021. It's tied. It, it's with not. It's next game. This one's gone up. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> An open critic, has it? Yeah. Holy smeg in hell. There you go. Wow. There you go. An open critic. Ratchet and Clank is no longer joint. It is second. It's silver position in front of It Takes Two and Monster Hunter Rise. But what is number one right now, ladies and gentlemen, is Chicory, a colorful <laughs> tale. A game that is on PC, I believe, right now. Uh, PC, PC, PS5, PS4. Oh, my apologies there. So, on PC, a PlayStation 4, and the Epic Game Store, I believe it is. Not on Steam. It's Epic Game. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's on the Epic Game yeah, Store. So I, it's, think it's on, yeah. I think it is on Steam. But I got it on the Epic oh. Game Store because I got my got my summer sale coupon. You did as well. <laughs> and so did I. I will be trying it out eventually because I finished college, so I've got plenty of time now so, to get into to get, to get, to get, get some gaming. But, let, Amy, Chicory, a colorful of times. Please. It's a painting game. You paint a magical paintbrush, which is used to color the gaming world. Yeah, it's um, it's a coloring book basically. Like the world is a coloring book. Um, Joseph, have you played any of that? I have not. I I totally missed out on this game because of E3. So I'm very interested to hear what your thoughts are on this because, as much as I want to dip into this game, I'm apprehensive because. I don't know what it is with indie games, but I got to be shooting something to be interested. <laughs> oh, oh no! Well, let I me see. If I can... Choose violence. 
Let me see what I can do to change to change that. Okay. Please. So yeah, like the whole world is basically a coloring book. Um I, I saw um someone describe it like that and I was like, that's it. That's the that's the take. Um so it's it's a top down adventure game, kind of very similar to Zelda, but as you know, Char alluded to, there's no violence in the game. Like it's a completely non violent game. Um you start off and the the whole world has just lost colour. Like that happens like right at the beginning of the game. The colour's just gone from the world. Um there's a there's a they're called a wielder, they wield like a magic brush. Like there's one of the there's like one of them in the world. Um and they're responsible for all of the colour, but they've disappeared. So you find the brush and you pick it up and you're like, Well, I got the brush. I'll just I guess I'll just start colouring things in again and maybe try to figure out what's going on. And that's 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 the premise of the game. I don't really want to get mm. too much into spoilers for the for what you're actually doing in the game. Um, but you basically you become the wielder of the brush, um, mm. and you're trying to sort of recolor the world and figure out why the color all disappeared in the first place. So like the entire game from the beginning is black and white. There is literally no color. The only color that goes into the world is what you put down in there. Hmm. It's pretty cool. And, and, uh, now, my question for you, hey. is this just a coloring book? No. But like, so, you, you, you hear, like, I hear Zelda-like elements in this so game. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a, Zelda, it's a Zelda-like um, adventure game. So there's essentially, there's a bunch of different things, like, going on with that. Like, the, the main one, and the one you've probably heard the most of, is the color and book thing. Like, you can literally spend your time, because, like, like Zelda, it's screens, right? So you go off the screen, and then yeah. the map moves and onto the next screen. You can color in every single screen. Like, and, and I'm going to be honest, I did that. Like for certain portions of the game, I would just sit on a screen, and I would just I would just cut paint and paint it all in, so I was all colored and stuff. Um, because you know the black and white world gets a bit depressing at times. <laughs> Plus, yeah, it is just incredibly absolutely. relaxing and just sit back and just be like, just be like painting stuff in. So like, the world is separated into like different different areas, um, and like the different areas, like they all have their own four color palettes that you can choose from. Um, so you just sort of mixing and matching those four colors in, in all the different areas. But the Zelda aspects are the adventure part, the part that you go on. So at the begin, as you begin, you'll be walking through a village. You'll be meeting people who are like freaking out because, well, where did all the colors just go? What the fuck? I don't, I don't know what's going on. So you'll start, <laughs> I mean, if all the colors is feeding off the world, you'd freak out a little bit, right? <laughs> But um, you'll be getting like quests, quite minor quests. Most of them will involve like, oh, just color in the house. Could you just color my house in again? Like someone, there's this guy, there's this matcha guy who'll be like, I want it to look tough. And then I made his house pink and he was like, that's perfect. And I was like, yes, I like you, you're a dude. <laughs> but um, like, just it's just to get you used to the mechanics. Um, as you start exploring the world, there's like a darkness throughout the world that sort of caused this. And then you start getting into the puzzle elements because that's where the the Zelda the Zelda ish aspects start to come into play. So they're essentially mm -hmm. you're essentially going to almost Zelda like dungeons, um, where you have to use the painting mechanics to solve puzzles. So for example, there's certain trees where if you if you color them in, they'll they'll sprout and become platforms that you can walk on, or there are bombs that can destroy obstacles like rocks. Um, and you, you, you move them around and you detonate them by using paint. Um, it gets more and more involved the further into the, into the game you go because you start getting more brush powers. So like they're mm. essentially your, your abilities. Like in Zelda, you would get bombs or the boomerang or something like that. In this, you get brush, brush powers. Um, like you'll get the ability, your paint will... Glow in the dark so you can explore darker areas. Stuff like that. But then when you get in the darker areas, there's like these bugs that will eat paint if you paint all of them. So you've got to be very careful trying to trying to like sketch out your path. Stuff like that. But essentially, yeah, it's puzzles going into boss fights. Um, which aren't necessarily really fights so much as you're avoiding boss attacks and you've got the brush uh, on I was playing this on PC, so I was control. The brush was controlled with the mouse, and it's like you've got to try and like paint, 
like the eyes of the boss, which are the weak points, for example, while you're running around trying to avoid the attacks. But there's only, I think there's like six, six or seven boss fights in the game. And that's about as violent as it gets. Hmm. It's not actually violent okay. at all, really. <laughs> Be like me throwing Fair paint cool. at Moody. <laughs> very cool. That sounds, it sounds like a very uplifting, lighthearted game in some ways for me. I don't know why. Just, that's how it came across while you were saying it in my head for myself. But um, uh, so going off what I've spoken to you about this, you are very high on this game. So what has worked for you in this game? So it, it is. Um, it's one of those very special games. And I feel like I've only ever encountered this with indie games where it is. You're absolutely right. What you just said, heartwarming and uplifting. But also, t it also tackles some real stuff, right? Like this, this game, and I'll talk about the accessibility options in a little bit, but this game has like great accessibility options, and one of them is you can have in-game content warnings. So before you're about to come across something you might not want to see, it'll give you a pop-up box and you can skip it, because this game deals with a lot of, a lot of issues of depression is one thing, imposter syndrome, anxiety, um... It's actually quite similar to what we were talk what you were talking about about Kit and Ratchet and Clank before. Um Yeah. And it's never it's never it's never the game is never depressing, it's never maudlin, but it doesn't shy away from letting those heavier moments breathe and hit the way they need to. But at the same time the the overall message of the game is uplifting and heartwarming. Um it does that contrast, that balance, that really well that I've noticed like some of the, the really, really strong indie games do. Hmm. How yeah. long is this game, might I ask? Well, that depends. <laughs> because there's a lot of things you can paint <laughs> mm. that you don't necessarily mm. have to. Um, so I played it in about 10 hours. Um, okay. You can definitely do it in less time than that. Um, and you can definitely do it in a lot more time than that. Um, like if you just want to paint the entire world, which I'll be honest, I was tempted to do. Um, it'll take you a lot longer than ten hours. Like I tend mm. to, I tended just to stop in villages and like call, like call the villages in, and then like the wilderness, I just more or less left blank. Um, yeah. But uh, you can, you can definitely, you get your time can vary quite wildly. Okay. For sure. There's also a lot of side quests, so you can meet, meet a lot of characters in this game who can who will ask you to do stuff. Um, for them, like paint houses, like I said before. There's a there's a mystery involving like some stuff gets stolen from a hotel, and it's like going to find the evidence for it by taking pictures of it, stuff like that. Um, there's a there's a ton of cool cool side quests <laughs> to do. Yeah. And a ton of cool, so many cool characters <laughs> to now, meet. Now. For me, my question as well would be, did you play this on PC or PlayStation? Or I played it on PC. Um, I tried to okay. play it on PlayStation. I was going to buy it on my PS5, but the store broke while I was trying to buy it. And then, oh, I was, and no. then that's when I went on Epic and I was like, wait, I can get £10 off this because I have a coupon. I'll do that. <laughs> oh, look at you. Look at you. Yeah, this is... this. Um, honestly, you're selling me on this game. Good. I'm, I'm trying because... That uh, that open critic thing of like, oh, it's the the highest rated twenty twenty one game on open critic currently. Like that's deserved. <laughs> like yeah. I feel like that's that's where I would put it too. Um. So yeah, definitely. You said you said you said there's many multiple great characters in this game. Uh, how many? Uh, which ones have stood out for you? Uh, so the protagonist for sure um, is one of them. The protagonist, the protagonist name depends on. So at the beginning, and I didn't realize this until about halfway through, at the beginning of the game, the game asks you some questions. Like, what's your favorite color? Which is, an, there's an obvious, like, way that plays into the game. It also says, like, what's your favorite food? And then you tell it. And I didn't realize until halfway through the game, that's what it calls the character. Like, the main character. <laughs> what? Well, your food? <laughs> what your favorite food? What's your favorite food? So the main character, chicken, um, is a very... <laughs> <laughs> Chicken the chi chicken the dog. Am I? 
Uh, That's awesome. It is. It's really cool. And I didn't notice for ages. I just assumed the, the because they're all anthropomorphized animals. I just assumed chicken was just the name for the main character. I didn't realize it was because that I'd said my favorite food was chicken. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize it until somebody else told me that that was the crack. Um, but yeah, like like chicken's main like narrative arc is she's just and I keep saying she. I'm pretty sure I don't know if there there was ever a pronouns used. I just that's where my mind goes. Um, yeah, but like. Like at the beginning of the game, Ch- Chicory, the, the the title character, is actually the previous wielder of the brush, um, the one who goes missing, and you're just Chicory's janitor. Like you start the game and you're just cleaning, you're just cleaning a room, and then it, everything happens, right? And then you find the brush, and so like for this entire game, Ch- um, Chicken is going through this story and th- doing all this stuff and like making and trying to make an impact on the world and like things start getting more difficult more dangerous and and like that's where that imposter syndrome stuff starts kicking in and that anxiety starts kicking in and the way that that you go through that arc um especially with some of the other characters you do meet chicory at one point and chicory does become a a fairly prominent character in the game um and those two together as well and like the story that they go on, it hits home for me. Like, because a lot of the stuff that they're going through in the in the course of the game about like imposter syndrome, about not feeling like you you're good enough, um, about trying too hard to please everybody. Like that's all stuff that I have struggled with in the past and will all and continue to struggle with. So like, I'm. I messaged someone, and it might have been you, Moody, where I said this game hits hits me where I live. Um, mm-hmm. and it does it I hits me it. where I live like so much and it, it's in those two characters like it's not all doom and gloom like the interactions between those two characters are incredibly heartwarming and incredibly wholesome um, at other times um, there's some great scenes between them like there's a scene where you're doing a doing a, like a dungeon you're on an island and you're about halfway through the island and you just find Chicory and she's just floating in hot spring and you can just mm-hmm. like join. You could just jump in and float in the hot spring, and then you just have a chat. And like, there's tons and tons of moments like that in the game. Um, shout out to the one character near the beginning, who's definitely just a tutorial character, but they pointed out <laughs> to me that you can. Most characters have more than like one thing to say. Like, you walk up to a character, you interact with them, and then in most video games, you go, "Cool, I've interacted with that character. Now I can leave." Most characters have multiple things to say if you keep interacting with them. <laughs> so shout out mm. to that guy, because that guy really turned the game around for me. <laughs> it was a very minor role, but a very important one. <laughs> yeah. I I did I'm really digging what you're saying here. Um because I need something for the summer that is something cheery, something colorful. I think we're entering out of the global panorama that we find ourselves in and we need something a little uplifting. Yeah. And like, so it's awesome to see that we got ratchet. We got, you know, chicory Chicory! Uh, for this game. Uh, that that's a little bit more optimistic, you know, at least that's what, that's what I'm getting at. It is. It definitely, I mean, it was in a wholesome direct, like, last year mm-hmm. we should tell you a lot about the game um best thing that was at e3 Liz, just so you know yeah but um like it, it does deal with real stuff and it does get real at times but it is also hopeful it is optimistic it is uplifting it is heartwarming um i, I like i came out of the game generally like feeling positive mm. Whereas, like, like complete polar opposite to something like I don't know, like say The Last of Us Part Two, or that just ground me in exactly. dust. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yet, was the best Absolutely. game for the last two years. Yeah, I'm not touching. I mean, that some one. would say, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Fight me, uh, Ghost of Tsushima nerd. was better than The Last of Us Part Two. I, I will be that brave. Side. I can't comment on that because okay, I never played it. 
I, I would right. be brave and say that I made a mistake last year and Hades was better than The Last of Us Part 2. No. Well, everybody is hot in the Hades. Yeah, Hades is amazing. I, yeah, Hades was in my top three as well. That's all. That's all. Yeah. all about this. I, I uh, can't wait for to get that on PlayStation. But like Last of Us Part 2, Oh, kiss. yeah, no, no shade on Last of Us Part 2. Like, um, mm. Two of the characters I want to highlight as well are, are Chicken's parents. So like mm. throughout the world, there's phone booths that you can find. And you can call your pet. You, you can call your parents, and they'll give you hints. So you get you talk to your mother, and your mother will give you like a vague hint, like about kind of what you're supposed to be trying to do. And then it'll be like, oh, you, your father wants to talk. You know how he'll he'll go on for a bit though, and then you can talk to your father, and he'll just tell you what to do. Like he'll like go two screens to the right, and then you'll find yourself in a place where you're in, and that's where you need to be. Something like that. And I can't say I ever really needed to use the hint system. I'm really glad it was in there. But I, I found myself using the phone booths a lot just because I, I liked interacting with Chicken's parents. And I liked the idea that while Chicken was on this on this quest to essentially save the world, it would be like she'd check in with her parents every now and again. <laughs> mm. It was really nice. It was, it was nice. Like, yeah. if I added to sum the game up in one word, It'd be amazing. But if I had to sum it up in two, the second word would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, out of the two games we've played... Don't oh, do I'm sorry, this to me, Joseph. You off, it's fine. Don't worry, go on. Don't do uh, this to me, crack. Joseph. <laughs> the two games we played, we, we saw that Chicory just edged out Ratchet and Clank. Don't make right, me choose. Right, Rift I'm going to make you choose. Don't make me choose. I'm gonna even be even worse here. I'm gonna even be more brutal. Okay. One game exists and the other doesn't. You have to choose. <laughs> I do this to Kyle all the time. Just tell me which one did you did you did you find yourself enjoying the most? That was where I looked up and your light went on. Uh chicory. Ooh. Chicory. All right. Nice one. Nice one. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. I can already say that I have already bought this game. Like Amy played like an hour of it and then texted me and I was just like buying it. There we go. Like Amy <laughs> knows me well and I know Amy well enough to like say if she's if something's clicking with her and vibing with her such a way in the first hour there's something special there. And I found out. So I have I knew I said to myself, I have to buy this. Oh wait, there's the coupon for my pick. Thank you, Epic. Save me a little bit of money and everything like that. But um yeah, it's uh I can't wait to play this game. Pro tip, if you <clears throat> if you if you hold the if you select a colour and like you hold the, the mouse down or the button down, um for a couple of seconds it'll just start filling the line of like whatever. So if you're like colouring in someone's roof or say the grass. Like instead of like painting it like furiously, you can just hold up on down and it'll slowly like fill it in. I didn't oh, know. Wow. I didn't know that for a little while, and it was a game changer. <laughs> it was up things for you, did it? <laughs> yeah, it was really helpful. Like in like yeah, like again filling in like the ground, <laughs> like <laughs> for example, because you can literally color anything: the ground, the sky, like the whole the whole world is is there to be colored in. Well, Joseph has just had you choose between, as if you were choosing between your children, there, Amy. But now I'm going to ask the thing that always I always ask: What's wrong with that? <laughs> what didn't work for this game for you? What didn't work for you in this game? Is it because it has no shooting in it? <laughs> I really enjoy games that don't have shooting in them. <laughs> you know me, Moody. My most anticipated game of 2021 is a game we drive around a truck delivering mail at people. <laughs> like. I'm more, Lake as well. <laughs> I'm more hyped for that than anything else. <laughs> unless they announce awesome. Hollow Knight. Unless they announce Hollow Knight. Um, what didn't work for me, like, very, very minor things. And I mean, like, I'm talking, like, really minor. Like, I'm looking at so the screen right now. like Joseph did with Ratchet and Clank. Then, I'm looking Clank. at the screen right now, and I'm like, you know how, like, it's really difficult to be really precise. Yeah. With, uh, with, the, pa with the painting. So, like... It'll be like sometimes there'll be like a say a tree stump and like a flower next to each other. And sometimes it could be difficult to like hit the flower, like <laughs> to, to like mm. to like colour that in the right colour. So sometimes it would be like a little bit fiddly with that kind of thing. 
Um, pro tip number two, if you push a but the button, which is plus on the PC, you can zoom in on <laughs> on stuff um, that you're trying to, to try and paint in. Um, yeah. It's about all I've got, really. It could be a little bit fiddly to paint things. Like you, there's quests in this game where you can like, we actually have you can draw stuff. So like, you, mm. there's um, like you can explore the world, find you find out outfits and and brush styles and stuff like that. Like it's it's the typical Zelda thing of to to continue to to continue the main quest, go right. But if you go left, you'll find a thing. Um, but there's also like stuff like you can design a logo for someone, or you'll go to art academy classes. Um, and it's like, draw something, right? And Mick Moody, uh, Joseph, I am the worst artist in, in the entire world. I can't draw Uh-oh. stick figures. <laughs> like, <laughs> Let me tell you something. You don't even know. <laughs> so like, I, so like, I'm awful. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm atrociously terrible at art. Um, so like, obviously, all my art was bad. Like it was, it was just bad. I couldn't. I can't draw. Yeah. I can't draw to save my life. No matter what you do in these quests, you will always get a positive response. Like that's awesome. Characters will always be like, "That's brilliant," and like they'll reference like the colors you used or the brush styles you used and stuff. And it feels quite nice because even though I know it yeah. sucks, like, but it's art, right? And like art isn't defined by something. Like, art can be whatever yeah. you want it to be. So, like, it That's is nice cool. to, like, draw terrible, terrible imp- – like, there's one point where, where a character asks you to draw a portrait of them, and <laughs> and I, I tried. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the character afterwards was like, no, that's awesome. Like, I really love it. That's awesome. And you can find it later, and it's hanging on that wall. Like, they've hung it up on their wall, Aww. and it's just like, that's still really nice. Like, I love that. Like, that's great. Yeah. Video game looking. should be, man. That's awesome. If you don't want to be hanging what I'm going to write, draw from. Don't. I, no, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Moody's like me. I'm like, this game is so wholesome. It's amazing. And it's like, I'm going to draw dicks on everything. <laughs> I'm going to draw boobies and wieners. Who's that in? <laughs> boobies and wieners. Do that. The <laughs> oh, well, I, uh, go on. I was just going to say one last thing. Um, go on. The accessibility options in this game are really good. Um, one of the key, the key ones is um, for color colorblind people, because I would imagine you'd be quite apprehensive about a coloring book game. But while painting and drawing matters in the game, the colors that you use don't matter. It doesn't matter mm. what color you use on things. So even if you're colorblind, you can still appreciate this game. That yeah. is fantastic. The accessibility, what I'm seeing from developers these days, they're... F- Finally, getting really into the doing accessibility like like that. I know Ghost of Tsushima did it. Uh, Last of Us Part Two did it. I believe Ratchet and Clank has some great accessibility. I was hearing. I think. Mm-hmm. Can you both confirm that or not confirm that? It's yeah. got some. Uh, no, yeah. So Tiki Reed yeah. has it. Uh, Hades did it last year as well. Just for baby ass baby mode to make it better for me to play for that to actually enjoy <laughs> that type of game before. And I think I'm not the biggest roguelike guy or anything like that, but to hear that they had this type of mode and that you can go and enjoy this game and you're not going to get angry at this game or anything like that. You can go in and just play and feel like you're getting somewhere. And that was a great you thing. Who wants to, to be see. angry at games? I know. Who wants to be angry at games? Who, ladies and gentlemen, wants to be angry at games? Don't put your hand, Joseph. Don't do it. Don't lower the standards we're not talk- anymore. We're not talking about you. We're, talk- we're, we're, <laughs> we're, do- we're doing a bit. It. We're doing a bit. <laughs> You're doing okay. a bit. You're doing a bit, and you ruined the bit. Ooh, wants to be angry at games. Two hundred fourteen rings. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but that bloodborne too, remember though. You completely <laughs> derailed, derailed an podcast. entire podcast with that. You one just one. That derailed the podcast. That was a good I just one. randomly went on Twitter while Amy and Foxes were just talking, and I was like, "Hmm, oh, there's Joseph. Joseph's tweeting something. Oh, and it's just like a shock, like the sh- the emoji or whatever a gif. I was like, oh, what's this? Oh, good God. Oh, God, this is happening, isn't it? <laughs> I must tell the only two people I know who love Bloodborne as much as Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> <Both> Live! <laughs> right here. 
<laughs> but so ladies good. and gentlemen we have had talked about two incredible games it seems like it obviously i can't fully talk about because i have never played them but they're getting rave reviews not only just by joseph and amy here but by just a collective from journalists around the world and everything like that both of them 890 and 89 respectively on open credit go and give them a try they're on multiple platforms and everything apart from ratchet and clank because it's only on one but either way you can still play it. If you have a PlayStation 5 out there, hopefully I will get one one day and I'll be able to play the heck out of it because I was already excited for this. The reviews came out, got me even more excited. Then hearing you talk about it, this has made me even more excited. And I want to play as Rivet because Rivet looks awesome. And I want to play as Rivet. And Amy, can I borrow your PlayStation 5 for like a week? No. I need it. <laughs> It's what I'm playing Mass Effect on. <laughs> there you go, there you go. I'll complete yeah. Mass Effect for you. I'll do all the that right decisions. That doesn't help tell me. me. <laughs> Just tell me the decisions you want me to do, and I'll do it for you. Either way. Um, Joseph, where can the ladies yes. and gentlemen and everyone else find you on the interwebs? You can find me over at Mr. Badbit on Twitter. You can find the Trophy Room at PS Trophy Room on Twitter. And if you want to hear my voice and my best friend Kyle's voice, you can head on over to the Trophy Room, a PlayStation podcast. You can find the video version on YouTube. You can find the uh, podcast wherever you find your podcast service, your podcast service choice. Whether that's Apple Podcasts, please rate us five stars. Whether that is Google Play, Spotify, wherever you get your RSS feeds, you can find the Trophy Room there and um and patreon as well patreon.com slash ps trophy and all that good stuff so do all, that. You can find us. Do all of that it's my it's my favorite playstation podcast so do do all of that thank you i also want to shout out kyle because i know this is a couple of weeks ago now here for him but he was just on psi love you and everything and i was so happy for the guy i know he loves kind of funny and everything like that he's a huge kind of funny nerd and i was so happy to see the nicest guy I've never spoken to technically, but like chatted to him a little bit on Twitter uh, to be just, just to see that happen. Because I know you've spoken to him about me about him with everything like that. That he's such the nicest guy, you know, and to see him do it's just to fulfil basically a little bit of a lifelong dream for himself. It's I was so happy to see that. And it was a great episode as well. Next it thing, was, go on. he's he's honestly killed it. Like really if did. I was blessing, I'd get nervous. If I was Greg, he'd <laughs> be like, oh no. We gotta yeah. shut these trophy well, room guys down before it's too, you know. It's the one thing. It's, I mean, it's the one thing I noticed um, when I was on on the trophy room a while ago. Like you, you and Kyle both are tremendously good at podcasting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, like thank it was, you so it much. was it really cool to see it like up close and like just be sitting there, just being like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these! Oh, these guys are really good. Oh, oh God! Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I feel yeah, like I need, but I'm here. I need confidence boost. I love it. <laughs> I, I live off it. Yeah. But now I have to say this though. Kind of funny. Yo, there's another PlayStation guy out there. Get him on here. Joseph deserves to be on the PS. I love you as well. So give him a shout out. Please. Kind of yeah. funny. Greg Miller, blessing Al Alalene Junior. I think it is. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I probably said it wrong. I do apologize if I did. But yeah, get him on here. We need that as well, man. We, you deserve it as well. Um, Amy, Kate, the amazing Alexander. Where can they find you? Yeah. <laughs> With you. <laughs> <laughs> Anywhere else you want to share? Ah, you know, I'm on Twitter at Jerovalod. Good luck finding oh. the spelling of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in that. the description. <laughs> uh, I'm at Mr. Underscore Moody online on Twitter as well. Ladies and gentlemen, hit me up anytime you want to talk about uh, games or even movies. Even though the podcast, the glorious movie show, may be gone, I will happily still talk to you about movies. Well, that's it. Let's get the hell out of here. The fashionably late reviews will be back in two weeks' time, ladies and gentlemen, where we'll be talking about more games and hopefully good ones as well. So, bye, everybody. Yeah. <laughs>